Well, welcome to everyone here uh, in Davos and those of you around the world, particularly the Global Shapers community, the next generation of leaders, some of whom, whom are here, some of whom are going to be joining us uh, on a hub, uh, and others who will be joining uh, on their laptops or their smartphones, wherever they are or wherever you are in the world. It's about creating 75 million entrepreneurs. Why do we say that worldwide? Well, because that's what the UN estimates is needed, because 75 million of uh, the next generation, the young people are unemployed at the moment, and the vast majority relying on small enter enterprises to join the workforce. So we want to get to the root in the next hour of how you cultivate an entrepreneurial mindset at an early age. How possible is that? And who has succeeded so far? What about redefining risk in career assessments and planning? That's critical at every age, whether you're young or middle-aged. And thirdly, what about building entrepreneurial ecosystems. Well, uh, to get the discussion going uh, with the audience here and uh, around the world, uh, we've got a number of people who are going to join us in a moment. But what's critical here is that it's the small businesses, those under 50 people in a company, the new startups, the innovations, they are where work is being discovered, where work is being created. The question is how entrepreneurial will people be? How well qualified will they be? The trouble is, certainly, uh, while that has been a great success over the last few years, in the last year or two, there's a sign that there's a fall off in the number of companies, the number of startups, the number of innovations which are coming forward, making it even more difficult, probably, to get 75 million new entrepreneurs. A reminder, that is the UN target. It's ambitious. Let's go to the four uh, hubsters, I might call you. Uh, give me 30 seconds on your background. Let's go to Muscat, first of all, to Shabib al Mahmari. Hi, uh, everyone. This is Shabib. I'm the executive director of Finjaz Roman, a nonprofit organization, part of Junior Achievement Worldwide, established back in 1919, 120 countries, 100 million youth participated in Injaz and uh, JA. Uh, uh, programs, uh, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and work readiness is what we concentrate on. Uh, all programs are for free. We're funded by uh, corporates and uh, private sector volunteers uh, conduct the program inside a classroom premises. All right, let me ask you, because you've been doing work within your hub groups of Global Shapers, let's go to Muscat, uh, Shabib al Mari, uh, to ask the question about the two main challenges now to promote entrepreneurship and young entrepreneurs in a community like, say, in Oman, Shabir. Yes. Um, part of it goes back to what uh, your guest been saying about creating a healthy ecosystem. And uh, for us, uh, we'll have to tackle an educational uh, system here, not even, uh, not only in Oman, uh, in the entire uh, uh, region. Uh, uh, there is a huge uh, uh, gap between what the market needs and what the educational system provides. And uh, um, again, um, one of the challenges we are facing in the region, everybody is working in silos. Uh, academics are working in silos, uh, private sector uh, are working in silos, and government is stuck in the middle trying to figure out how to solve all these uh, challenges. We've kind of seen a big change after the 2011 incidents across uh, the region. Uh, there is a real will uh, to change, uh, but there is a lot of groundwork that needs to happen. And uh, to, to be, in my opinion, needs to happen uh, ground level food, uh, grassroots level in uh, our educational system. But where in our education, educational system would you start if we talk about entrepreneurial uh, education? Is it the teacher? Is it the curriculum? Uh, is it private sector needs? Is it, is it marketplace uh, uh, identification? It's all these uh, elements that we need to identify, tackle one by one, uh, and then work gradually into the higher educational system uh, and identifying the potential opportunities in the marketplace. Uh, I'm looking at a chart uh, uh, just before we started about the population here in GCC, and Oman is no exception. Um, between 50% to 65% of the total population is are expats, uh, and expats are here uh, uh, to work. We have a lot of opportunities, but then we have the mindset uh, problem uh, where majority of our graduates wants to work for the government, and they don't prefer working for private sector, let alone starting your own business. And starting your own business is a totally different story here in the uh, uh, GCC, I would say, uh, uh, region, uh, where you uh, bring up the capital, you can take a loan from the government or from uh, one of the banks, and then you hire an expats and they run the business and uh, you become what we call here in the region a sleeping uh, 
partner or your cash in while someone else uh, is working hard. This is going to change uh, uh, real soon. Uh, the population is growing. 65% of the population is under 25. Majority of these uh, uh, youngsters are going to join the marketplace really soon and they need jobs. Government, All right. uh, government can't Shabib. hire all these people. Uh, uh, private sector um, is not going to hire uh, uh, not qualified uh, uh, graduates and all the studies show that 65, 45 to 65 uh, uh, percent of GCC graduates lack the basic skills of what does it take to be successful all right. in the private sector. Right, Shabib, uh, thank you very yes. much indeed. What kind of ask do you have of Davos and those gathered here? Do you get a sense that what, what is being discussed or will be discussed will have any relevance to the kind of solutions you would like to see where you are? Shabib Al-Mar in Muscat. Yes, um, actually uh, Davos can do a lot. Uh, from our experience, uh, um, transfer of knowledge and know-how does wonders, especially in the educational uh, system. Uh, um, and with having, uh, you know, um, a lot of resources, and by resources I mean people, human capital. Uh, talk about challenges, re challenges. Talking about solutions that have been working for a while. Transferring the, those solutions uh, to the countries in need, to educational system in need, to government uh, uh, po um, po policy makers. Uh, uh, all this transfer of knowledge and know-how can uh, do wonders uh, um, in, in our countries and our part of the world. We have the money. We have the will. Uh, but still, some, some something is uh, is missing. And in our experience with jazz and junior achievements, it's, uh, it's been always the uh, connection between private sector and academia that uh, does wonders uh, and been a success uh, for, for us at least for the past 15 uh, years. Hey, thank you to Oman, to Saudi Arabia, uh, to uh, Gujarat in India, and uh, to Ghana as well. And they're all putting their thumbs up <laughs> as well. Thank you very much indeed. The thumbs are going up here. And we had a thumbs up from <laughs> Alcoba as well in Saudi Arabia. Thank you all very much indeed.